Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Happy Camper Radio Show, the only place to be when you're ready to talk camping. Camping is what we're about. Camping is all we talk about. It's episode 203, and Daniel and I are back in the studio again. Hello, Daniel. How are you doing? Hello. All right. Well, we've got a great episode for folks today. Something to talk about. Very, very important. Hypothermia. Daniel, I don't want to talk about hypothermia. Let's talk about staying hydrated. All right. That is so important because... We still have a lot of hot days ahead of us, Mm -hmm. and I know a lot of campers are going to be out there, and some of you will be in this hot sun, so we're going to talk about keeping you refreshed, keeping you hydrated. It's a great episode coming up for you today on this edition of Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio. We are going to be talking about hypothermia probably in about another three months. Yeah. You know, because we're going to have some uh, nice winter. You know, the almanac is talking about a very, very cold winter. Okay. I think it's going to be starting in uh, late January and ending in early February, but they're talking about some really frigid temperatures. Ugh. I know your house is all nice and insulated. Your camper is insulated. So kind you're going to be you're going to be fine. Yeah. All right. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually go winter camping during that time frame, mm-hmm. but you just never know. Uh, you never know what we're going to be doing. But anyway, <laughs> it's great to have you back here in the studio again. Great to have you back, our listeners. You can get in touch with us here at the Happy Camper Radio Show by calling 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to www.happycamperradio.com. That's where you're going to find all of our social media icons right there on the homepage. You connect up with them. And we'll give you a shout-out on ah! the program. Yes. <laughs> Daniel, we've got a lot of folks here we want to recognize on today's edition of Happy Camper Radio. Let's start up by saying hello to Mike Hyde of Frontenac, Minnesota, Chris Nunn of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Scott Labonte of Springfield, Massachusetts, to Tommy Britt, Tom Austin of Birmingham, Alabama, Keith Larson of Russia, Sylvania, Ohio, sounds like Pennsylvania. Hope I pronounced that right. And Matt Miller of Jacksonville, Wisconsin. Also want to say hello to Michael McWilliams. I I think you're bringing the the Uh in-laws on the show, aren't you? That's the brother-in-law. Yeah, that's your brother-in-law, isn't it? There we go. Glad to have him, too. Is he a a camper now? Uh, Is he a happy camper? Actually, we went up to my parents' uh, trailer a couple weeks ago, and they came up and uh, spent the night. Wonderful. Well, they all like us on Facebook. And finally, to uh, the broke outdoorsman, sounds like me, and to Daniel Wedlake, who subscribed to us on our YouTube channel. Thank you all so very much for joining us. And more importantly, thank you for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. Would you like to be on the program with Daniel and I? Get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com, and we'll make that happen. Daniel, we have a few folks already lined up as guests on the show. All right. And we're going to be getting to those fine folks when you return from this special event. And it's a a very popular event this time of year for you. You're uh, checking out tonight, aren't you? I'm uh, going to my friend's house who uh, lives right behind the Hilton downtown Atlanta. Yeah, Going to Dragon Con. It unofficially starts tomorrow and um, it's all the way till Monday. It's nonstop 24-7 nerd mania. Well, and you do this every year, you and your wife. Every and, and year. You dress up. I do. Okay. Uh, you, don't, you don't actually participate in the Dragon Con parade, do you? Um, we used to watch it, but it's just gotten so long over the years that they have it on TV, and so we can just watch on TV. But uh, uh, over 100,000 people come to that. I well, think it's from the, your, your it, air-conditioned hotel, yes, that's go. exactly where you want to be. The, it's the biggest uh, parade in Atlanta. Okay. And I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, having you back here next week. Ooh. Yeah, and uh, we've got a lot to do, a lot of things to accomplish. But on today's program, Daniel, I want to talk about something very important. Um, depending upon what part of the country or part of the world you live in, for that matter, I can tell you the importance of staying hydrated when you're out and about, especially when you're in the outdoors and you're engaging in outdoor activities. Uh, Daniel, you more important than anybody because mm-hmm. you're on the move constantly, and you made that point very clear 
when we were camping at Fort Yargo because I hardly ever saw you at camp during the day. I like to move. When it was, yeah, when it was raining, on the other hand, yes, you were back and you were in the comfort of your tent. So was I. You know, the rain follows us wherever we go. Right. But when the rain is not there, we had the sun beating down on us. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I always make it a point to do, Daniel, is when we camp, I bring as many water containers as I have available to me and bring them to camp. Mm -hmm. I try not to load them up before I leave unless I know for sure there's going to be fresh drinking water at the campground. In this particular case, there was. Right. But I was bringing like 15 gallons <laughs> worth of fresh water that we had available to us. Mm -hmm. And this is so important because when the hot summer sun is beating down on you, You've got to stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. If you've got a campfire going, that's not really helping any no, better. No, it's not. Okay, even though, you know, I like to have my campfire burning, but at the same time, I make sure that I have plenty of drink available to me. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, having fresh water is one thing. Um, I always like to add a few uh, treats. I want to say maybe some iced tea, some Lipton iced tea. Right. All right. I got some lemonade. Uh -huh. And I always make it from concentrate. Right. Okay. But, you know, the water, fresh water is going to be nearby. Uh -huh. So that's never going to be an issue. On mm -hmm. the other hand, you, mm -hmm. I know when you go out, you take some bottled water with you. Well, um, when we went hiking uh, over there, we uh, we had, um, we had uh, hydration bladders like the um, camelbacks and, you know, you you have it like strapped to you and you, you take a sip every now and then out of the thing. But um, basically what you're talking about with uh, all the heat and everything. Um, so I don't know how many people know if you're new to the show. Uh, I, I work for the post office. I'm a mailman. And um, last year we had a, uh, a lady out in California. She was in her early 60s. She died of a heat stroke. And that is so, so sad. Yeah, and uh, a bunch of people have fallen out from heat stroke, heat stress, and so the uh, every day, almost every day at work, they talk about you know the importance of uh, hydrating, getting into a cool area, getting into a shaded area, take your breaks. If you're if you're getting cramps, you know, slow down. Don't push it. Don't eat you know a big meal before you go out there. Make sure you have electrolytes in your um, in your drink, not just water. Because the electrolytes, um, they replenish your uh, salts. And another good thing is uh, what I like to do is I like to drink um, pickle juice. Pickle juice is really good for um, keeping your salts in your in your body. And they sell uh, pickle pops in the uh, in the grocery stores. But I mean, if you're not a big pickle person, there's always Gatorade or um, Powerade and stuff like that. It's just you just want to make sure that you don't want to drink. When you feel thirsty, you want to keep drinking before you get to that because feeling thirsty is just the first step in heat exhaustion, heat stress, heat stroke, and, you know, bad things. <laughs> I don't know how the folks on the Appalachian Trail do it. Well, they're in the shade. Well, yeah, it's yeah they're, they're in the shade, Daniel, but how often do they arrive at a destination where there's going to be fresh water? Um, oh, oh, fresh water's everywhere out there. The problem with... Um, I'd say the heat is uh, on the PCT. The PCT is out west, and it's all out in the open, and water sources aren't as plentiful as they are in the uh, Appalachian Trail because at the AT, there's there's water everywhere. There's, I mean, that's where a lot of the water that comes to uh, us, that comes down to Lake Lanier that, you know, gives us our water is the water from the mountains and, you know, that comes down the, the mountains and goes down the lakes and into Lake Lanier. But out west... Um, there's not as much water, and what a lot of people do to get out of the uh, heat is they'll have a hiking umbrella, and they'll use that to get the heat off them, and they'll take breaks, and a lot of them will um, sleep during the day and maybe hike later in the evening or at night, so just to get out of the heat, and you, you got to be very careful, very, very careful, because the thing about Georgia and on the East Coast is when it's hot, it's humid. And you sweat. You sweat a lot. Oh, tell but, me about it. But out there, it's dry heat, and you don't sweat hardly at all. So if you're not sweating, you're, you're not really uh, you're noticing how much you know water you're losing because it's so dry that it's it's wicking up the water before you know come down your body, and you don't even notice it. So it's really scary out there, and you just want to make sure that you're hydrated and you get your electrolytes, and make sure 
that your salt intake is uh, is adequate to keep going because you'll start getting cramps, and uh, that's just the first sign of uh, bad things to come. But you got to be really careful and mindful of that. Well, that's some good, uh, helpful tips from somebody who actually spends a lot of time hiking, <laughs> and you, you made that very clear Not when you much. were out there doing your geocaching and there whatever, whatever else you were doing. But yeah, in, in that case, I mean, you were for the most part in the shade a lot, mm -hmm. so you didn't have a whole lot of sunlight, uh, you know, coming right down on you. Uh, one of the appropriate things to do, also, folks, if you're going to be out there, uh, regardless of whether you're hiking or whatever you're doing out there in the hot sun, make sure you are wearing lightweight light colored loose fitting clothes mm -hmm. it, it's so important that you have that and uh, i guess maybe that's why gary got named the green giant uh whenever he was hiking because i, I know that outfit we saw him in a lot uh mm -hmm. when he was hiking the appalachian trail he was like that lime green outfit yep he's and tall he, and he wears green <laughs> <laughs> and, you know and that worked out very well for him um, but you know for the most part you know if you don't have to be outdoors do not be outdoors uh, I don't have to preach to the choir for folks who have RVs and uh, motorhomes and, and travel trailers and things like that because just about every one of them have air conditioning systems. So when it gets a little too hot, they get out of the heat mm -hmm. and get into somewhere where it's cooler. But if you're a primitive camper like myself and you're going to be in the outdoors, you know, get into the shade as much as you possibly can and try to avoid the sun if you don't have to be out there. That's why we carry that monstrous canopy. Yeah. And we spent a lot of time under that. Not That's just nice. to, to get away from the rain. Mm -hmm. All right. But, you know, when it was hot and the sun was beating down, that was a nice, cool place for us to be. Absolutely. Plenty of room. I mean, had the picnic table and even some room for our chairs when we yeah, wanted to that sit was around nice. there. So, yeah, it, it worked out very well. But, uh, yeah, this is one of the things, Daniel, I, I want to be talking about this here because, uh, you know, here in the metro Atlanta area, uh, we have had some heat related illnesses. Uh, that and Daniel and I, there have been a couple of tragedies, mm -hmm. uh, all because of the heat, and, and a couple of them occurred at, at these uh, high schools. Oh where, yeah, yeah, the the high school workouts and yeah, stuff. yeah, you know, a lot of folks. I mean, they they uh, get out there and they get ready for football practice or cheerleading or mm -hmm. marching band or whatever the case is, and uh, for as best as possible. The uh, coaches and whoever is in charge, uh, you know, do what they can to make sure that these kids are hydrated and monitoring the heat. But, you know, everybody's body's different. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's something that could, that could happen. And there's a couple of folks that did fall out because of, of the heat. Mm -hmm. And uh, tragically, there has been a couple um, fatalities here because of that. Well, I, I think the biggest problem with that is that they like to do these practices after school. And I understand that and everything. And. You know, this doesn't last forever. Football's more of a uh, a winter kind of sport. Right. But but what I never understood was why they can't uh, start it like at 6.30, 7 o'clock when it gets cooler. That It seems like they always have it like at, you know, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock. I mean, I know that's when you get out of school, but, I mean, don't take that chance if you don't have to. I mean, sometimes you can drink all the water you want, but if you're not, if you're not, you know, main, if you, if, you just keep losing it as you're taking it in and you're not holding any salts in, then bad things are going to happen. I mean, I, I know you're not a big football person, but uh, for all the people out there who watch football, you'll see big old containers of uh, pickle juice on the sidelines and you'll see, you know, um, respirators and stuff for them to get their air because it's it's a very grueling sport and everything. And you just got to you just got to be careful and you can't just you can't be too hard on these people they're not professionals they're not getting millions of dollars you you can't push them too hard because they got a lot of life to live and it ain't worth it for them to you know suffer heat stroke or heart attack or die this young in life so i uh, i think uh, i think they should start later i know it's kind of a pain in the butt they'd probably have to come back to uh, school but i don't know i i think i think that Doing it that early is kind of dumb. <laughs> I can I can agree with you there, Daniel. But um, you know, it's just sports is something that's uh, embedded in a lot of kids. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of extracurricular activities. I know I was in the marching band when I mm -hmm. was in school, and uh, I remember even before the school year started, about a month ahead of time, we were there practicing every single day. We were showing up five days a week. Wow. To start learning the lessons for whenever school kicked off. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they do it different now. I mean, we were going back now to when uh, they pulled down the pillars of Rome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that's, that's, that. Uh, that's been a long time ago for me. 
But, um, yeah, you know, if you can stay in the shade, as long as these hot temperatures are here, wherever you're at, uh, you know, try to stay, you know, as cool as you possibly can. And like Daniel says, he's got some great tips there on, on keeping yourself hydrated and keeping your body filled with all the nutrients and everything it needs um, while you're out. I'm not saying that you have to go ahead and cancel a camping trip because of the the summer heat. Uh, I've canceled trips because of the rain. Hmm. All right. So uh, there's some elements out there that, you know, you need to be aware of. And, of course, there are some um, other things that you can uh, keep in mind, like staying in the shade. And if you want to bring one of those big canopies, if you've got room for them in your hatchback or your pickup truck or whatever you're bringing, uh, it's worth the investment especially if you're going to be out in one of these areas where the trees are not around your particular campsite and you want to go ahead and set that thing up. Uh, for me, Daniel, it takes, what, about 15 minutes to get that all put together? Mm-hmm. And um, But again, you know, it, um, it provides us plenty of, of uh, shade. Also, when you're out, make sure you wear sunscreen. Uh, sunburn affects the body's ability to cool down and can make you dehydrated. If you must go outdoors, protect yourself from the sun by wearing a wide-brimmed hat. You mentioned these umbrellas. Daniel, is that the kind that uh, they, they put on their head? Is, is It opens up into an umbrella. It kind of makes them look like it came out from the uh, Three Ring Circus. I mean, they have those, but they, um, as far as hiking, I mean, you could use it for anything. But they have these very um, lightweight, and they have reflective material on top, and they may be like a pound or so a piece, but it, it really keeps you cool in the... Uh, in the beating sun, if you're out in the middle of, you know, a desert or something, it really helps, you know, to get the sun off because, I mean, like you said with sunburn, the thing about it is like when you're, when you're walking, like hiking and stuff, I mean, you can wear sunscreen, but you sweat so much that a lot of it comes off and, you know, with hikers, they're all about weight and cutting weight. But as far as a normal person who's maybe just doing a day hike, I mean, I would probably put on some SPF 30 and maybe reapply every two or three hours, and I think you'd be okay. Make, I'd probably put a little higher on your face. Make sure maybe you put some um, specially formulated face stuff on your face. And sure. You should be fine. And definitely wear a hat because um, your your head can get burned. I mean, I know you got hair up there, but— you know, sometimes it can beat through, and getting sunburn on your head is no joke. And let me tell you this one thing. Uh, a few years ago, I, you know, I put sunscreen all over my body, and I forgot the um, the top of my feet. And that is one of the worst places in the world to get sunburn because it just hurts to walk. So make sure you cover every exposed area of your body, feet and everything. It's it's very important. Sometimes I, I won't cover it too much, and you can kind of tell there'll be like red just splotches where I where I kind of missed it sometimes. So you you wanna you wanna try to get it in as as good as you can. And if you're going with someone, make sure that you know they're covered completely, and you know just to help help your people out. And I would say another thing about going out to eat. I would always I would never go out by myself because you you need someone looking out for you, making sure that you're doing okay, you're hydrating, you're reapplying your sunscreen, they're reapplying their sunscreen, you're, you're basically uh, looking out for each other so nothing happens. So if something does happen to one person, the other person has their back, and it's just a safety thing, I think. Yeah, and Daniel, and you know, while we're on this subject here of sunscreen, uh, the Centers for Disease Control here in Atlanta um, have some very useful information. In fact, I have a link on our webpage at happycamperradio.com under safety tips. You'll find it right there on this particular subject matter. Uh, they're recommending sunscreen of um, an SPF of 15 or higher mm-hmm. and making sure that you put that on and cover all those parts of the body like you were just talking about uh, approximately 30 minutes before going out, and you really need to continue reapplying it according to to the package instructions. Now, here's something else to talk about, too. We're talking about the sun. We're talking about uh, the rays of the sun. You definitely want to be making sure that your eyes are protected as well. You know, you want to have uh, UVA and UVB protection and make sure that, you know, you're wearing those sunglasses and protecting your eyes. In addition to wearing those wide brim hats that you're talking about, mm-hmm. uh, because not only that, you know, protecting your eyes, it protects the top of your head too. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're short some hairs up there, that's another place that you could uh, be burned very yep. well, and you don't want that as as well. 
Uh, Daniel, here's something else that's so important. And you've heard about this because I know you've got your earbuds in while you were out there on the road. So you're listening to a lot of radio. You're listening to a lot of news and talk and, and what have you. I'm listening to Happy Camper, Skip. Good. I would hope you would. <laughs> and we got a lot of episodes there for you to listen to as well. But, folks, here's something I cannot figure out for the life of me, especially when the temperature is as hot as it is. We are hearing, Daniel, not only here in the metro Atlanta area, but I'm sure all across the country, you can relate to this wherever you're at. There are some people who will go out shopping, they park their car in the hot sun in these shopping malls or shopping centers, and they tend to leave their children in the car. Mm. We yeah. hear about that so often down here, and some people knowingly do it, figuring, well, if I crack the window, the kid's going to be okay. No, the kid's not going to be okay. Because the, heats are, the heat is very dangerous. It can heat up very quickly inside that vehicle, even with the uh, windows cracked. Some people even leave their pets in the car mm. because they know they can't I, bring them into the store. You know, And, and yeah. it's not safe, Daniel. It, I, it really is uh, I have something to say about that. So yeah. we, we got a new car uh, not too long ago. It's uh, I think it's the 2018 um, uh, Chevy Trax. But um, they have this thing where it's a remote start. And you can program it to stay on for longer than, you know, maybe the five or 10 minutes that it's usually done. And when it stays on, you know, the doors are locked, the engine's on, you you have the key with you, but the air is on too, because we went to this, uh, we went to this little ice cream place, but we had our dog with us. So we just started the car up. We had the air conditioning you know, on full blast because, you know, we do, like you said, we do hear about this all the time. We had the air conditioner on full blast. We had it timed for, you know, 10 minutes. We weren't going to be there that long. And, you know, I think that's that's a really good thing to have in a car. But, I mean, it's like you say, I mean, some people uh, leave their kids in the car by accident. And that yeah, just that boggles my mind. I mean, we had a guy uh, a couple years ago, I know you remember this because you work in news, that got uh, sentenced to prison because he left his uh, infant kid in his car while he went to work. and. Mm -hmm. That I guess he got convicted for maybe doing it on purpose, but like, I don't. You just gotta be, uh, gotta be aware yeah. of you know who's in the car, what's in the car, and you know, take precautions. I mean, I, I think an open window will be better than not an open window. They might still suffer. And Daniel, Daniel, there's I, I no, agree. I, no, I gotta disagree. I got you know, if you're gonna take your kid, you quick. take you. I don't care I'm saying how for a dog. It is. Uh, even for a dog, all right? My lovable Sadie, my buddy, your buddy, okay? My buddy. You know, I went to get a burger here last week. She was in the car, and mm -hmm. the drive through window uh, was broken, and mm -hmm. they couldn't take my order. Told me I had to come in. Forget about it. I'll just go to another restaurant because I am not even going to go in for five minutes, mm -hmm. whether leaving my car running or leaving my truck running or not. Mm -hmm. All right? My dog is not going to be in that vehicle by herself. No way, no how. Okay. Right? She goes with me. If I had a youngster, the kid goes with me. Uh, if if I have to get out, the kid comes with me. If I if I have to leave the kid in the car, forget it. I don't need to go in there. It's not that important. But you know, there's a lot of useful tips again. You know, on our website here at HappyCamperRadio.com. Uh, you know, talking about heat-related stroke, uh, whether you're out camping, whether you're doing the outdoor thing, whether you're driving around. Uh, a lot of these important tips are so really important. And folks, especially when it comes to pets and youngsters, uh, they are at higher risk for heat stroke. So, you know, keep that in mind when you're out and about, uh, even when you're at the campground, make sure that you have plenty of drinking water, plenty of uh, things to keep yourself refreshed. And Daniel, you know, you and I were uh, camping for like three days, but, mm -hmm. you know, how, how many times did we actually go up and uh, buy some more ice? Not just to keep the ice in the, the cooler and the food refreshed, but also, you know, to keep the ice inside the drinking water and anything that we're having to drink. I imagine if you're going to go camping somewhere and you're going to go out and about and you're, you know, you got one of these uh, bottled water systems that, you know, where you got the hose over your, strapped over your yeah, arm yeah, yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. that, that's called. All right. I'm sure you pack that whole thing with ice before you even put water in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, you definitely want to keep refreshed. And again, uh, just check out our website, happycamperradio.com. And you'll find it under safety tips. It's very important. It's tips for preventing heat-related illnesses. Great topic. Very important topic. 
And uh, make sure you listen to this program and this episode every now and then just to keep yourself informed about what could happen and try to stay cool and try to stay in the shade any opportunity you possibly can. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio. Daniel, I've got a wonderful campground that I want to take our folks to. Okay. It's Holmes Bend in the state of Kentucky. It's part of Green River Lake, and it is our featured campground of the week on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Situated along Kentucky's Highland Rim, Holmes Bend Campground is surrounded by forested tracks, rolling meadows, and pristine banks of the Green River Lake. The Holmes Bend Campground offers 125 campsites, 102 of which have electrical hookups only, and 52 of which have water and electrical hookups. Amenities like flush toilets, showers, fire rings, and drinking water provide a comfortable camping experience. A playground and an interpretive trail offer additional recreation opportunities within the campground. If you're still out there in this particular uh, time of year, the swimming beach is available. Several miles of multi-use trails to include horseback riding, a reservable picnic shelter, parking areas, additional playground and restroom facilities, boat ramp, courtesy dock, fishing pier, and a whole lot more it's all part of the Holmes Bend campground experience. And folks, this is not a very expensive place to go camping. If you're in the state of Kentucky or happen to be passing on through, uh, you're just going to run you about $17 to $25 a night. You know, and you can make your reservation right online there at recreation.gov. Just look for that little blue tab at the upper right-hand corner. If you go to their website, it says sign up. Click on that and create yourself an account and it makes your reservation process go so much smoother anytime that you reserve a recreation.gov campsite through recreation.gov. And I tell you, Daniel, I'd like to get out there a couple more times and, you know, falls around the corner or maybe in about another month or two, we're going to be enjoying some of the temperatures that uh, we really enjoy being in. Absolutely. You know, where it's not going to be, the sun's not going to be beating down on you. And I, and I know a lot of folks don't go into the winter camping thing uh, like me. But, you know, I've enjoyed the cold temperatures. I tolerate the hot temperatures. Uh, again, it wasn't too bad when you and I were camping here just a few weeks ago. It was pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we're going to be doing it again. I really had a great time. And, you know, folks, if you haven't already caught that episode on YouTube, definitely check it out, Daniel and I, at Fort Yargo State Park. But, folks, keep in mind this particular campground. It's a wonderful campground. It's right in their peak season right now all the way through October 26th. If you're in the state of Kentucky, definitely consider Holmes Bend. It is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Skip and Daniel on HappyCamperRadio.com. And if you have a campground you would like for us to feature on the program, definitely get in touch with Daniel and I. You can email me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at HappyCamperRadio.com. Make sure you include a link to the campground website. Well, Daniel, I think you're about all packed up and ready to go, aren't you? No, I got a ton of stuff you to do. You got a ton of stuff to do. Well, you know, <laughs> yes, you'll, sleep, you'll sleep good tonight. There you go. And tomorrow you'll uh, put all, all that makeup on and uh, you'll start wandering around and the hotel guests who are just there in town for a convention and stuff are going to be looking at you and going, what the heck are they letting no, you do this no, hotel? No, 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 there's no makeup. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing the old Magnum PI tomorrow and uh, I've been growing this mustache, as you can see on our uh, page. I've been growing this mustache off for about three months, so it's it's all going to pay off. I got my hat this morning. I got the Hawaiian shirt. We got the belts. We got the sunglasses. We're ready to go. Well, if I get into the studio here while you're gone these next few days, I might get you on the line and maybe we we'll, we'll do a, a you know a, a quick uh, uh, episode. Maybe you can tell us what's going on down there. And, Absolutely. Know, you know, you're you're in your glory. You're in your, your prime whenever you get into Dragon Con. Absolutely. You know, if you happen to be down there, look for Daniel. He's not hard to spot. But anyway, folks, thank you so much for being in touch with us here at the Happy Camper Radio Show. It's always a pleasure being with you and talking about camping and we'll be doing it again real real soon so stay tuned remember friends every pet deserves a loving home i want you to do exactly like i did visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today you can find us online 24 hours a day seven days a week at www.happycamperradio.com like us on facebook follow us on twitter at camp tucker and subscribe to our youtube channel the Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Huber Productions. I'm Skip. 
I am a happy camper. Daniel's a happy camper. Woo! He'll be more of a happy camper in about three hours from now. <laughs> <laughs> and you hang around with those folks. I promise we'll make a happy camper out of you. Talk to you again real soon. Appreciate you. You're listening to Happy Camper Radio. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.